Welcome to a video from thedislife.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how I've been playing with some old versions of Windows uh, on my Surface Laptop 2 with Win uh, running Windows 10 using Hyper-V. So this is a way of going back in time and seeing some of those old versions of, of Windows. Now, you may be old enough to remember them from the first time around, or you may have just heard of them, or you may have not even heard of them at all, and you'll see some of the legacy that... Um, it comes all the way through into Windows 10 so um, I've tried lots of different OS's uh, some really old ones like DOS 1 uh, Windows 3.1 Window, and then gone to the 32-bit systems like Windows NT351 which you see there NT4 Windows 2000 I've also tried Longhorn as well I'm gonna do a blog post to go with this that I've just started doing which details some of the things that you need to do um, but I thought I'd recap those sl slightly on here and then just show you some of the systems in place. So, like I said, I'm using Hyper-V for this. You need, for Hyper-V, you need Windows 10 Professional, and not the home version, and you need to enable it, which you can do there through add um, features in Windows, so you can enable that. And that's really all you need. The other, the other part of it is getting the source files. So, the source files you can get various ways um, MSDN still have some old versions of Windows on there you can download the ISO the boot files of uh, the virtual file the DVDs or the virtual CDs of the installs some others you may have to be a bit creative to find or you may have the disk lying about somewhere so some operating systems uh, from NT4 onwards uh, require a, a virtual CD for older ones like this NT351, you actually have a virtual floppy drive that you need, and then uh, you have the installer CD. And for things like obviously Windows 3.1 and DOS, just come with floppy drives. So, before I just dive into just looking at going down memory lane, looking at some of these operating systems, just uh, one thing that as a as a tip, a couple, or a couple of tips that um, I found to get this working the best way. When you're creating Hyper-V. Um, virtual machines as you can see in my step-by-step -step guide here I always use the Gen 1 machines there that supports 32-bit operating systems which is what we need I always uh, on some of the older ones I gave them <coughs> 1024 mega memory and turned dynamic memory off Hyper-V has this nice feature for uh, dynamic allocated memory to make things simple for the guest OS I've turned that off and most importantly if you want networking to working you don't need to use Hyper-V's virtual networking, you need to use a legacy network connection. So let me show you on one that's currently switched off, say this one. Um, here you can see my settings. So I gave that one 32 meg, didn't do it dynamically. But you have a, a network adapter. This is a legacy one, I've already done it, but on one that's non-legacy you remove that and then add hardware and add the legacy network adapter in. So after you've built your, you've gone through the initial wizard here, go, th go through and do that, um, go back into these settings and do and uh, and get rid of the legacy, the normal network adapter and replace it with the legacy one. So here's one that's uh, a later one. So that's the, the normal one. So I click on remove and then go and add in the legacy one. Okay, uh, another tip that I've got as well is uh, when you're creating the hard drives, the virtual hard drives for these things, always uh, create fixed drives. So, um, a two, a, say for Windows NT4, create a 2 gig fixed drive and that, that's all you need. You don't need the dynamically allocated ones. I've got to say, I, did, I very much didn't have any success with anything pre uh, NT351. Windows 3.1 and, Win and NT um, Windows um, 95 would sort of get up into the operating system um, mode and uh, would sort of kind of stick. I don't think I've got there. So here, these you can see I've got Windows uh, 1 and upwards, and th they would get as far as the setup screen like this, and then it wouldn't work any longer. So and same with Windows 95. So your look may vary, but I had trouble with that. So the first operating system I did get up in was NT351. One other really important thing to do is to do this command here. So you go into an admin PowerShell and do set processor, um, 
the name of your virtual machine and then these this makes it compatible with older operating systems so make sure you do that and just use the name that you gave it during this stage so like I say I'm not the walkthrough is full there on the digitallifestyle.com where I've got all the guides on how to do it but for this video I wanted to more show it some of the operating system so here you can see I run it NT351 so um, NT351 32-bit operating system um, which is one of the first ones I used when I was very young and uh, it was your professional environment as opposed to Windows 3.1 which was uh, just the consumer version of Windows effectively and really Windows 10 can really follow its all, itself all the way back to NT um, there's, there's elements of NT351 uh, in Windows 10 and this is the first version the user interface looks very much like Windows 3.1.1 or Windows 3.1 for work groups that kind of thing it had networking built in built in security something Windows 3.1 didn't have admin sort of protection and admin admin accounts and that kind of concept user accounts and you probably used it with NT351 server which was add your, your user accounts on and this was the client you used so you could install Word on here uh, Microsoft Office uh, you probably get Lotus 123 install Lotus Smart Suite as it might have been at that time and you can see here you've got like the user manager and you've got some things like you recognize event viewer um, it's grown up a little bit since then but these are the things that really Windows 10 kind of uh, inherits um, performance monitor these things so these are this is the shell which is running on Windows which is that sort of Windows 3.1 style so I installed this by inserting the Windows NT351 floppy disk the virtual image of it and um, uh, also the NT351 CD and a few steps to get this up and running relatively straightforward just to the, the wizard that you run through interesting actually to create a default printer um, so at times and uh, you could still create user accounts and everything else through the setup so out of the box this everything worked there's no web browser built into this you could get windows into explorer one or two maybe for three five i think two but uh, i didn't install on this on here one issue I did have on this is how you get stuff onto here you'd need a virtual floppy of Internet Explorer or a virtual DVD of it and I didn't have those so um, that so I've left this as is but it all works very familiar now what about other operating systems so the next one I did was NT4 and NT4 again worked as pretty much uh, straight out of the box um, you boot from a bootable DVD it still captures you don't get the full integration you've got to sort of capture and release the mouse there you go so I can boot into that now so I booted off the NT4 DVD TCP was installed by default this time so it means it could go on the network and on the internet this is where you've got to be a bit careful now if you start running these really old machines on the internet they're prone to being hacked with viruses or whatever so take be warned and make sure you've got your your uh, tools set up but look at that ntt ones just sewn up thrown up a ip conflict because i started this one up um internet uh, nt4 windows 95 style user interface it really was um a good operating system for the time it came with professional workstation which we're on now and uh, the server versions and uh, if you had a domain network you would probably boot off this uh, so this would be your client machine and you'd be connected to a domain controller I did try a few different things like Microsoft Bob which I'll show in a second Internet Explorer how about Internet Explorer 2 there we go uh, virtually nothing opens on the internet on it um, you can try stuff like Google some pages will try and open some things most things won't Internet Explorer 2 and 3 I got up and on here so there's two and I can go on to there's IE3 so you can see the change in the user interface when they did IE3 this flat user interface I remember that being a big thing at the time uh, a lot of applications copied that flat style with the pop-up look at that you get a warning every time you get a cookie I'm glad you don't get that nowadays uh, so there you go there's a bit of Google it, that's about the only thing you, I can get working on it but you can see there the difference between IE3 and 
IE2 that was built into NT351 with Internet Explorer, uh, Microsoft Internet Explorer. I also tried Netscape Navigator, who remembers that? And let's not make that the default. There we go. In, no, and not much worked on this one as well. Who remembers downloading Internet Explorer? Uh, <laughs> so who remembers downloading Netscape Navigator? Uh, there you go. Not a brilliant browsing experience, but uh, kind of works. Uh, again, this has got that flat style as well. So I think it was about 96 I was using this one of my first uh, jobs and uh, very robust system no plug and play no um, power management so uh, obviously it wasn't ideal for laptops where you want to suspend and shut it down or whatever this is uh, wasn't really designed for laptops so I did see it run on laptops but so you see TCP IP is working internet's working I can browse the local network uh, We've got inbox. What was it? inbox? That was Microsoft's uh, mail tools oh, for Exchange. So that was the Microsoft Mail Scheduling Plus, I think it would have been called um, application. So it predates Outlook, the full version of Outlook, I guess. This is what you would have had at the time if you had a mail server on your own uh, network. So it would have been Microsoft Mail Server, not Microsoft Exchange. I do remember playing about with that back in the day. So there you go, NT3, uh, NT4. Uh, following on from NT4, the next step up was the very advanced Windows 2000, uh, which is another one of my personal favourites. I, you can see here Windows 2000 running. No problems getting networking up and running on this as well. You can see we've moved into the internet age now. We've got IE5. I5 still not brilliant, but we've got things like um, Outlook Express for um, your mail clients and your newsreader, and NetMeeting. Who remembers NetMeeting? I used to yeah, use this. Predates Skype, um, and which is Microsoft. Which remember Microsoft bought Skype, so this was before that was time. And you could do PC to PC video conferencing, calling that kind of thing. Even share your desktop with NetMeeting. I remember using that. Uh, much better on the internet but uh, still not that many sites working I think that MSM page and Google were about the only two pages I could get working so this is Windows 2000 it's, this is the professional version again you could have the server with a domain on, on a domain or you could have a work group like you could with the older versions and see just a lot more familiar if you're a Windows uh, newer Windows user, you'll recognize some of this layout stuff. So this is Windows 2000. Works pretty well, actually. So one of the great things about Hyper-V as well is, I'm finished with NT3.1, I don't have to shut it down. I can just save that and come back to that later. It'll resume from where I left off. Now, what about Longhorn? I've got a couple instances of Longhorn, and the uh, very short expiry date on them. You had to, had to change the date and time of the machine, or the date of the machine, to get it installed. So I had to change it back to 2003 to get the one of the builds installed. There's multiple uh, builds. Oh, there you go. I need to free up some memory before I can install that. So let's say goodbye to NT4 for now. We can save that one. I probably should shut some browser tabs down. Right, let's fire this long horn back up. So. Longhorn, right, so you may have I've skipped Windows XP which came after uh, Windows 2000. I think that's kind of, I've still got scarred by Windows XP, seeing Windows XP everywhere. Um, so after Windows XP, the next development was codename Longhorn. So this was an uh, ambitious project by my, Microsoft, you can find out well, more on this Wikipedia. And uh, essentially it just became so complex and there was other security issues coming out from Windows XP Service Pack 2 but Microsoft did a reset and just kind of restarted the, the Longhorn development based on Windows uh, 2003 server code base and uh, that became Windows Vista so this essentially is before this is before the reset and based on that original design of Longhorn this is the M4 build, I think they call it Milestone 4 builds, and 
I've, unsurprisingly, I've had quite a few issues with it. I couldn't get network working on this one at all and some blue screens when installing drivers. So I can't show you the power of Internet Explorer 6 um, because this won't go on the internet. Probably not a bad thing because uh, I think there's a, probably a few security vulnerabilities on this. But here you can see the kind of half a house between Longhorn, um, between XP and Vista. We've got this sidebar down the side with Longhorn clock and you could have a slideshow. These did kind of show up in, in Vista and some shortcuts and things. And then you'll see things like go to my documents, the new way of viewing documents and searching on there. Um, kind of carry over to, to Vista, but kind of this XP look. There are multiple Longhorn builds available if you look for them at all different stages of development. So uh, you could your what what you see depends on what you get on which build but uh, this does take me back a bit because you kind of see that hybrid between XP and, and Vista um, even things like some screens which didn't really make it across anywhere this hardware screen which is kind of a weird way of viewing at it but I guess this became the printers and devices screen in later versions of Windows and here you can see MSN Messenger down there, uh, ready for me to sign in, and a oh, Windows Messenger, pre pre MSN Messenger, and sign in, and get chatting with people. <laughs> uh, so that's Windows Longhorn. This one um, is keep shutting down every hour because the build has expired. It was originally a 2004 build, and uh, here we are in 2019, which is probably outside that trial period <laughs> as you would expect. Uh, interesting, this kind of start this theme that's installed here as well. Um, is kind of XP, but kind of history. I don't, I, I don't know. more XP, I guess, at the moment. That's where they were in the development at this at this stage. So I did get some others. Uh, tried some others. Uh, went Windows ME. I didn't get past the boot screen. And Windows 95. Let me. What's this one? This is Windows One that I tried. So I can briefly show you this. So here we are. In, this is DOS. 3.3, yep, um, and if I go into Windows and do Win, it should fire up, there we go, this is Windows 1, um, but you notice this is now crashed this session, so I can't do anything with it, so there you go, Windows 1, and I had the same thing with Windows 95, got past, got up to the start screen, and it would crash as well, so we'll look with the 32-bit versions of Windows, but an interesting look back at different version of Windows, and show you how flexible Hyper-V is, uh, I'm also using this for testing the 20H1 builds of Windows 10, next year's builds of Windows 10. So I've got builds going back, uh, nearly t well, of 20 years worth at least of build of different versions of Windows on here, all using Hyper-V, running on this Surface Laptop 2 and running the recording software as well. So follow my guide, which I'm going to put on digitallife.com. I'll get this posted and you you can give this a try yourself. Um, I've included some links of suggested places where you can get some of the things that you might need on here. Oh, I did tell you about Microsoft Bob, did I? Microsoft Bob on NT4. It's not really... Let's fire this up. Let me uh, save that one. And uh, we'll resume that one. So Microsoft Bob was kind of like a, a home, I suppose a bit ease of use front end to Windows 10 and um, it was like a home environment and it would make Windows 10 easy it's like the virtual assistants type thing uh, but it crashes all the time on here mainly because I've not got the video driver uh, in 256 colors I think that's part of the reason but there you go I can click on the dog you might it see kind of see the the clippy thing uh, you know where you had that looks like you're trying to write a document so I can enter the home and there we go to make this fully retro-tastic, I've uh, managed to get a blue screen. Sometimes you get in the home, sometimes you don't. So there you go. That's a good way to end this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.